This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, episode 179. Feng Shui for travel luck, protection, and opportunity. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hey there. How are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, whatever the time of day it is where you are. It is blowing a gale here. You know, they say about, what is it, March roars in like a lion and comes out like a lamb. Well, it roared in as a lion in March. (laughs) And here we are almost to the middle of May and it is still roaring. It's really weird about the wind and how wind has been blowing a lot. And It's interesting to know that wind is related to travel. The four star in feng shui is related to travel and it's related to the element of wind. And that means change. And that's one of the things that I got to say I really love is I do love when there is wind and a breeze. It just makes you feel like life is not static and still and stagnant. And I love when the wind blows, but I got to say, after two and a half months of 20 plus, 25 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour, even heavier mile, uh, 40 mile an hour winds, it's been uh, blowing long enough that I'm, I'm ready for a little bit of a rest. And my hair is too. <laughs> it's been two and a half months of very bad hair days. I have had hair flying all over my face and all around my head. And all I can say is thank Goodness for baseball caps. They're not just for men anymore. Well, today we're talking about wind and uh, and the changes on on it because there are lots of changes on the wind. One of those changes that's come up is travel. It's opening up. It's so nice to see the world starting to come back, uh, feel more normal. I feel like now I can kind of go in and out of some stores without wearing a mask all the time. And that's just been my choice, my preference. I haven't uh, contracted COVID and I don't want to get it. But uh, it's just one of those things where we're starting to feel like we can kind of feel normal again. You know, I don't, it's like I want to whisper. (laughs) I want to say it too loud. But it's, one of those things that we're, I think we're going to start easing into and feel better about, more comfortable, more relaxed. And that means making plans again, like going places. And it is one of those parts of life that, I don't know, for me, planning vacation and making plans for time away, time in new locations, that is something that I hitch my wagon to every year. The plans that we put into place at the beginning of every year is something that keeps me going, keeps my sights set on it. And so while I'm working in the weeks and the days and the months as the year go by, I I think about, oh, well, I'm going to be in Hawaii at this time, or I'm going to be in France at this time, or I'm going to be wherever. And that really keeps me going. And this is what I want to talk about today is what you can do to enhance your travel luck and opportunity to travel. And then when you go places, give yourself some protection. So I'm really excited because my 60th birthday is coming up. It has been a year of, uh, of the 59th year of my life. And uh, many Chinese women actually skip that year. They go from 58 to 60. I think they're smart. <laughs> 59 is not considered to be a very lucky number. And uh, it certainly wasn't for my sister in her 59th year. And, you know, it's, it's, I was going to say, it's, it hasn't been a really hard year, but it's, it's been not without its difficulties. And this is a birthday that it's the number that's kind of getting to me. I got to tell you, it didn't bother me when I was 30, 40, 50, but this one, 
This one's got my number. <laughs> Thankfully, though, uh, Tim has made a beautiful plan for us to celebrate my 60th birthday, uh, which is in June, in Venice. I am so excited. We had talked about going somewhere for my vacation, but couldn't decide where to go. We talked about all kinds of places, and nothing seemed right. Nothing seemed like the place to be or a place I wanted to be. Isn't that sad? I mean, we talked about everything. I mean, you name it, all over the U.S. We talked about different places in the Caribbean, Mexico, Costa Rica, Europe, you name it. Even Paris. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny. I just was like, I don't know about everything. It, nothing appealed to me. And my feeling is I'd rather have nothing than have something like meh. You know, I don't like meh. I would rather wait till I can have, you know what they say, you know, it's a, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And that's how I <laughs> live my life. If it's not where I go, yes, you know, then it's like, eh, you know, and I just don't do eh, very well. Anyhow, that's my travel philosophy. There you have it. Meh or hell yes. <laughs> so here's what I want to say is that I am hoping you are getting out and going or making some plans or thinking about it. Of course, I don't know what, you know, everybody's got to do what they feel comfortable with. And I understand flying with a mask on for hours at a night on time. And, you know, all these mask rules, all the vaccination rules and all that stuff, it's all kind of in flux. So it depends on where you're going, who you're flying, all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, I'm going to just leave the whole vaccination and mask thing aside for now because I don't want anybody going, you just said you encouraged mask wearing. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not doing that. This is, not, this is, if I talk about masks, you know, let's not make it political. This is just the reality of it, right? We have a pandemic that's gone all over the world and, and China, as hard as they are, trying to keep the lid on that boiling pot, you know, it keeps, you know, bubbling over. And I just, sometimes, you know, you just can't fight the, the sea with the Dixie cup. We just have to muddle through. And for the most of the world, we're getting along and we're starting to, things are opening up, moving open or open, moving forward. And, and hopefully you're moving forward and we're certainly moving forward. I'm excited about that and, and so happy and relieved. And it's just like <gasps> a huge sigh of relief to know we can start making some plans and start doing some things. Now, let's talk about travel. So when you are traveling, whether for business or for pleasure, you know, uh, this is one of great, uh, the, one of life's greatest enjoyments, I think. And you can enjoy the benefits of feng shui no matter where you are, whether you're at home or you're in a hotel room. You might have even noticed that you enjoy your travel a little bit more or less when you travel to certain places that are maybe in one direction, or maybe you find that you enjoy travel equally well, but maybe uh, some places you enjoy more than others. I know that's for, that's true for me. Um, there's not many places I don't enjoy. There was just like one country that I was like, eh, no, okay, that I take that back. There was, there's a few countries <laughs> that I was like, eh. <laughs> anyway, won't be going back there. Anyhow, don't ask me what they are. But anyhow, Asia, you know, that might be a draw for you. And for others, it might be Europe. So no matter where you like to travel best, or if you would just like to enhance your travel luck, I'm here to tell you that feng shui can help you enjoy a safe trip and take you to some of the destinations that you've always dreamed of. Yep, I'm a big believer in using feng shui for travel luck. In fact, one of the things that I did this year, I was like, I want to go somewhere. I want to get out of the house and see something. And I have been dutifully keeping a conch shell wherever the six star flies. And then it's once planted uh, all year long in the northwest corner of our living room and wherever the four star flies. I have uh, a crop of conch shells and I love conch shells. I, I can't tell you. I just, you know, it's so funny. I used to be a, a wind chime gal and now I'm all conch shells <laughs> when it comes to feng shui. Love my conch shells. But let's talk about feng shui travel and directions. Uh, so when you look at your personal feng shui, unlike your sitting and sleeping directions, travel feng shui directions that are auspicious or inauspicious based on, or, or based on where you're traveling from 
rather than where you're traveling to. Isn't that interesting? So for instance, if you're an East Group person, you live in Dallas and you travel to Los Angeles, you would say that looking from Los Angeles, you're coming from the East. So that's a good direction for an East Group person, but not so much for a West Group person. Now, if you're a case of a West Group person flying to Los Angeles from Dallas, from Dallas some people would say um, that that is not the best trip for you. And they would recommend that you would fly from another direction. One that would be having you come from the West. Like, so for instance, if you were to be coming from, from uh, Los Angeles to Charlotte, so that would be saying that you were traveling for the rest, but that's not practical, is it? That's just not practical. We're going to be coming from all over. And instead I say, just throw that stuff out the window. Yes, the little plane window. Just roll it down, crank it down, and throw it out. Instead, focus on what you can do where you are and focus on bringing protective items with you when you travel. We're going to talk about some of those. Make sure that you work on enhancing the travel energies in your home. We talked about that, the Northwest, and wherever the four-star flies, the annual four-star, always a good way to get moving on uh travel and getting yourself going. Let's talk about let's talk about the importance of getting yourself out and about in the world. If it's been too long since you poked your toes in some sand or went on an adventure, all you need to do is just keep that northwest corner of travel and helpful people activated. So add something moving here to help you Pack your bags. This can be a fan, it can be a mobile, a clock, a kinetic sculpture, anything to get that travel chi moving because that's an international uh, element of, of the sixth, or excuse me, the northwest corner, which is the sixth star, uh, but it's the northwest corner. And this year, that's where the sixth star is. So that's why we want to get that all nice and, and, and uh, activated. And like I said, you can also use a conch shell or any pretty metallic object will also boost all that travel energy. Uh, I have to say that I'm always fond of conch shells. We talked about that to get your travel gear uh, energy into gear. But if you want an extra kick of travel cheat, add some pictures of the places that you like to visit. Put it on your vision board, uh, especially if you can put that vision board or a picture anywhere in the Northwest or wherever that annual four star flies, that's going to be activating that. But I really like to see pictures on a vision board of where you'd like to go. And uh, I had no idea that I was going to be going to Venice. <laughs> this year, but uh, it would have been on my trap on my vision board uh, for travel if I had known that. So make sure that you get some images up there. I think that's so important to see those images. Maybe you write some new moon wishes of where you'd like to go, where you'd like to travel to, and then maybe put some pictures on those new moon wishes if you include that in there. You know, uh, again, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words and a thousand wishes in my mind. Uh, always good to have an actual image of anywhere that you'd like to see. Now let's talk about hotel rooms and when you're traveling. You know, there's hotel rooms have so many people uh, visiting. So when you're on a trip, I like to bring a travel symbol like a conch or a calorie shell. It gives you some protection. It creates smooth relationships while traveling. It gives you that feeling of harmony and contentment. And it's also protective of you. So I really like to carry a, a calorie shell. And in fact, I have I have like a you know little cases that I carry on all my travel stuff in like you know have a makeup case and you got your toiletries and I've got one little case that has your like hair stuff you know hair brushes and combs and that kind of thing and I always carry my calorie shell in there that means wherever I am that's where that calorie shell is and it's it's a protector and so I like that it's also one of those things that you can put it out in your hotel room and it doesn't look weird <laughs> I also like to freshen up my room with a travel candle, especially in a nice natural scent like lavender or lemon, something like that. It kind of freshens up the room, gives it a boost of yang energy because hotels sometimes can be yin. They can also get kind of that damp or stale smell. And especially after the pandemic with so many people not traveling, a lot of hotel rooms might have been kind of closed up. And I think it's a great way to freshen and enliven your space. So really good. And plus that fire... Uh, uh, energy uh, creates that social energy, that social energy that makes you want to get out and, and eat and enjoy and have, uh, have 
fun while you're out. You know, remember that fun? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a wonderful thing to add to your hotel room and to your travel bag. Now let's talk about protecting yourself while you're traveling. Uh, because you're out of your usual surroundings, it's always good to think protectively. Now that doesn't matter even when you are away from home. You've always got to be thinking protectively. I think it's important that you keep some protective sim symbols with you and some things with you and take those steps. Now I can tell you from personal experience, that I really like those locking suitcases, especially with those TSA approved locks. Um, you know, it's one way to just add another layer of, of hmm, I have to have to work for this one. And so somebody might who has bad intentions might go for another suitcase. Uh, and, and that's happened to me. I, even when we were traveling first class and on, uh, on an airline, um, particularly, I remember, and it was like, you know, there's usually business class and then there's first class. We're actually first class uh, on this particular trip. And boy, my luggage got rifled through. And then, since then, I've always gotten that, that locking luggage, and it makes a big difference. I also like tote bags that are zipped. So if you have a like, carry-on or a tote bag, it's, make sure it's always zipped. I love it to, uh, when I, you can see luggage. So picking a color that is bright, especially like red luggage. Red luggage attracts attention. Black luggage is something that people will kind of like, you know, it can blend in with a thousand others, but that red luggage, you're going to see it right away. And red is also the color of joy, excitement, happiness, as well as protection. Red burns through negative intentions of others and it protects you against theft. So I think it's a really good color for you to carry when you are traveling. Now, don't like red luggage. It's not real easy to find. <laughs> so my next suggestion would be to find yourself a nice piece of red ribbon, uh, maybe something that goes over the handle, anything, a red, like a, a red luggage tag, put something red inside your luggage, put something red outside your luggage. So carry, you know, you can wrap it with a ribbon, a bandana, anything like that, just to give it a little extra layer of protection. Now let's talk about some travel rituals. These are for pleasure travel, and these are for travel going toward the following directions. So if you're traveling to the south, and this is from the south wherever you are. So if you are traveling from, let's say, the northeast, New York, and you're going to Dallas, you're actually going southwest. Keep that in mind. Ha ha ha. Yes. So pay close attention to where you are traveling from. Your your wherever it is that you occupy in space, you're gonna want to look at it. So if you're if you're going from New York City and you're going to DC, well, you're going, you are going south. So that in that instance, this works. So remember, this is where you're going towards. So if you're going to the south, drink a glass of water or wash your hands before you leave the house. For travel to the southwest or to the northeast, swipe the air with a branch of a tree in the direction that you're traveling. You can do it three times. And then if you travel, if you're traveling toward the west or northwest, you can light a candle or incense and point those in the direction of your travel. This is because if there's any negative Ill or ill intentions, these are the elements that actually destroy that direction. I know, but it's protective. So that's what we need to look at. Now, if you're traveling to the east or southeast, you can ring a bell six or seven times in the direction that you're traveling just before you leave. And for travel to the north, put dirt in a small cup and throw it in the direction of the north. You can also point a quartz crystal in this direction. I think that's kind of a cool thing to do It's just point a quartz crystal. I don't know that I'd be going around throwing dirt. <laughs> personally. So do you get that? So if you're traveling to the South, that means you're coming from the North, you're drinking water. If you're going to the, if you're going to the South, it's a fire energy. So you're drinking water or you're washing your hands. That water element destroys the, the negativity from the element of that direction. So that's, that's really all. If you know five element theory, then that's all you have to do is think about where the direction that you're you're going to, and then whatever the, the destructive element is, you can uh, just use that, employ it that way. Now let's talk about business travel because it's a little bit different. So this is travel that goes toward the following directions. So travel rituals for business. So if you're going on business travel to the south, you can wave a branch with leaves that's been tied with red ribbon, uh, and you can do that three times. This ensures good travel luck and good business relations. Now think about that, travel to the south. What does that mean? mean waving a branch of leaves tie with a red ribbon that means that what how 
how is the energy of the South enhanced? It's enhanced by wood because fire wood feeds fire. Travel to the South is the fire energy. So by waving that branch of leaves, you are stimulating that fire energy for good stuff. Now, if you're traveling to the Southwest or the Northeast, fire is the protect or is the element that is the productive element. You can light a candle or some incense and hold them up in the direction as you are packing to leave or heading out. So this is also a nice thing if you're headed to the Southwest, let's say, let's say you're in New York and you're going to go to Phoenix and you've got some business in Phoenix, light a candle or some incense uh, as you're getting ready to leave just to give you a little extra business luck. For travel that's going to the west or northwest, you can uh, throw some dirt or sand in that direction because that is an element that is, the earth element is a productive element for the, the west and the northwest, which are metal. So you can point, uh, I also like pointing a crystal that way or holding a crystal, taking a crystal with you if you're headed to the west or northwest. That's another thing that is very pos- uh, very, very positive for you. For travel that's going to the east or southeast, you can throw water in those directions as you leave the house. You can wash your hands. I would say if you're traveling to the east or the southeast, have a glass of water, drink a glass of water uh, as you're leaving the house. Just take a bottle of water with you and drink it as you're leaving uh, for for good luck. And if you're traveling to the north, ring a bell three times as you're leaving and ring it in the north direction because metal is makes water and that's the, the element of the north direction. Now, if you have any questions about five element theory, you're not really sure about it, be sure to check out my quiz at redlotusletter.com and just do a search on five element quiz. Or I think if you even put quiz, it might just come up and then you can test yourself. So these are all good ways to enhance travel with, for business that helps you have prosperous tra- uh, travel and prosperous business relations, as well as travel rituals for pleasure travel. We've talked about how to protect yourself when you're traveling, those locks, red luggage, a cowrie shell, especially in your hotel room, uh, bringing a, a travel candle with you, and importantly is getting the conch shell out or, or stimulating that northwest corner of the international energy. Uh, That is so key to getting yourself out and getting yourself going. I hope that you have some fun travel plans this summer or this year, later this year. I'm heading to Ireland later this year for two weeks with Tim. Really excited about that. Haven't been there before, and I know it's going to be a great time. I'm really, really looking forward to it. In the meantime, I hope you get out and that you get some some travel plans going. And if and um, and let me leave you with three really important tips. One is stimulate the Northwest. Add those conch shells to get yourself going. Two, always carry protection. I love a calorie shell. If you look at my website on redlotusletter.com and you look for travel travel feng shui or something like that, if you search on it, you'll see this article. You Use the calorie shell that I have in the image in on the article. That calorie shell I carry with me everywhere, and I've had very good fortune everywhere I've traveled since since carrying it. So I can't say that <laughs> I did before that, although I've ha- always had good travel luck. But uh, I've really had good travel luck since carrying it. So it's a really nice protective element. You can also put a peacock feather in your suitcase if you like. And then lastly, carry something red in your suitcase and on your suitcase, just a red ribbon. It gives you a little extra protection while traveling. All right, bon voyage. I hope you have some fun plans and get going. I'll talk to you on the next episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. Hey, thanks for listening today. Although the year of the tiger is here, it's come in with a roar, and there's going to be some big ups and downs this year, like the invasion in Ukraine. But I wrote about Putin and some of the other world leaders in the year of the tiger feng shui forecast and success pack. Now, back in 2021, when I was writing this in the fall, I could see this on the horizon and I warned about it. There's other things that you're going to want to know too, like where to invest your money, where to find love and what to expect all year. And I cover all houses and bedroom directions and every zodiac sign. The success pack will help you be ready for the year, be prepared, make more money, and keep fortune on your side. Check out the Year of the Tiger Feng Shui forecast at redlotusletter.com forward slash water tiger, all one word.